Hello everyone. My name is Juanita Pope and uh, it is my first day on the job as interim CEO of VCOS, filling, uh, trying to fill some very big shoes which were left by Emma King's departure last week. Uh, I couldn't be more pleased to spend my first day in this way, sitting here and listening to so many inspiring and powerful voices for disability advocacy in Victoria. I'd like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung people of the Kulin Nation on whose lands we meet today and to pay respects to elders past and present and also to emerging leaders. I'd like to thank Tony for his very generous words of welcome to us this morning and for his uh, encouragement and call to support The Voice. And I'm pleased to say that VCOS uh, does support The Voice. Um, and I'd like to also pay respects to any First Nations people who are with us in the room today. It's my privilege to introduce our next speaker, the Honourable Lizzie Blanthorne. Minister Blanthorne is speaking today in her capacity as the Minister for Disability and Ageing and Carers, but she also has a number of other portfolios which are highly relevant to the matters we've been talking about here today and we'll continue to talk about this afternoon. The Minister is uh, Minister for Child Protection and Family Services, the Coordinating Minister for the Department of Families, Fairness and Housing, and the Deputy Leader of Government in Parliament's Legislative Council. And the Minister was appointed to these portfolios after the 2022 election. So this is her first time at the Daru Conference. And Minister, we're delighted to have you here today on what is the first in-person get together of Victoria's disability advocacy sector since 2019. The Andrews Government has been a government with a strong focus on inclusion and equality. It has an ambitious reform agenda, and we're all very much looking forward to hearing your reflections, Minister, on how government can drive greater diverse di disability inclusion in Victoria and the important role of disability advocacy. Please join me in welcoming Minister Blanthorne to the stage. Thank you very much and thank you for that warm welcome. Uh, can I also begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we are gathered, the Rwandari people of the Kulin Nation, and pay my respects to elders both past and present and also to any elders from other communities and all Aboriginal people who may be joining with us here today. Uh, can I also unscripted uh, add my support to the voice campaign and say that I will be voting yes and uh, very pleased that VCOS has added their name to this uh, once in a lifetime opportunity to give due recognition and voice to First Peoples. I'd like to acknowledge Juanita Pope, the interim CEO of VCOS and all your first day officially today, thank you. Um, and Melissa Hale, the manager of the Disability Advocacy Resource Unit. And can I also acknowledge your departing CEO, Emma King. I was very pleased to acknowledge Emma's contribution uh, to communities across Victoria and certainly the role that she's had at VCOS for such a long time now in the parliament recently. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation to be with you here today at the 2023 Strengthening Disability Advocacy Conference. And as Juanita said, the first in person for a very long time, which is very exciting. And I'm happy to be here with you. I understand that the tickets sold out a month ago, which is an incredible demonstration of the sector's desire to connect and to share and to learn uh, together and from each other. Uh, thank you to the speakers and the panellists this morning for kickstarting today's theme, Other Lifeboats in the Ocean. Uh, this is a phrase we've heard a lot over the past year and we can add to it Oasis in the Desert and Magic put in. And there are some compelling images there, but I think as all of you here in this room know, there is a lot more to the story. While there are many challenges to overcome and there always is more to do, we must recognise the long-standing and the ongoing work towards greater social inclusion in Victoria. We have to acknowledge the work that all of you in this room do and the work that we collectively do together to here in Victoria make disability inclusion, all inclusion, business as usual. 
I know many of you have worked tirelessly for many years to improve access to supports and services for people with disability. And over the past 40 years, Victoria has come a long way in making inclusion a reality. But as we have heard, there is still more to do. And as advocates, you continue to play a critical role in achieving this goal. We know you work with Victorians with disabilities so that they may experience safety, equity, choice, control over their own lives. And it is important work that promotes the rights, the human rights and the dignity of Victorians with disability. And this is why the Victorian government invests more than $3.3 million each year to the 23 agencies that provide advocacy to Victorians with disability through the Victorian Disability Advocacy Program. And it's also that we recognise the current high demand for your services. So in this year's budget, we also allocated an additional $1.8 million for this program. I'm proud that the Victorian Disability Advocacy Program remains the most comprehensive advocacy program among all the states and territories in Australia. Minister Shorten recently said to me at the Disability Reform Minister's Council, you can also always tell a Victorian because I'll always tell you how much better we do everything than everyone else. Uh, it also ensures that Victorians with disability can equitably access supports across both the mainstream services as well as the NDIS. And as advocates, you support individuals to prevent or address instances of unfair treatment or abuse. And in doing so, you help build the capacity of people with disability to speak and to represent themselves and to be heard. Moreover, your, syst your systemic advocacy also supports long-term social changes to make sure the collective rights and interests of people with disabilities are upheld. Supporting a strong and a diverse advocacy sector is a key priority in Inclusive Victoria, our state disability plan. Inclusive Victoria was developed after a broad public consultation process, and I'm grateful for everyone's input. I know many of you here today have contributed your ideas and your advice into this plan over some time. And in addition to the importance of advocacy and self-advocacy, you told us that there are some key themes, cross-cutting systemic reforms that were important to underpin all of our efforts. Firstly, co-design with people with disability. Secondly, Aboriginal self-determination intersectional approaches, accessible communications and universal design, disability confident and inclusive workplaces, and effective data and outcomes reporting. All Victorian government departments have committed to embedding these six important reforms in their policies, in their programs and in their services. Improving accessibility and inclusion is part of our core business across the Victor Victorian government. It is and should be business as usual. The Victorian government has made significant investments to improve the accessibility and inclusion of our education systems, of our transport systems, health services, as well as public spaces, housing, the list goes on. For instance, we've invested more than $1.6 billion for disability inclusion reforms in our schools. These reforms place the needs of students at the heart of our response, building on what students can achieve rather than focusing on what they cannot. The tiered funding approach enables schools to invest in the supports to ensure that all students can access the learning, their learning on more equal terms. In the most recent state budget, there was $235 million to help students living with disability, their carers, their families, through initiatives such as expanding the outside school hours care program to 30 specialist schools and the students with disabilities transport program. As part of the government's transformative early childhood reforms, we have invested in the kindergarten inclusion support equipment, which provides specialised equipment such as standing frames and hoists. And moreover, we are continuing to employ preschool field officers, experienced professionals who can work with staff to help provide inclusive programs for children to learn, for them to contribute and to them, for them to grow at kinder. We've also continued to support the Disability Liaison Officer Program, which helps people with disabilities, helps their families and carers to access the support, care and treatment they need while they're in hospital. And we have invested 80.7 .7 million in the 22-23 budget for health services that interface with the NDIS, including the Home and Community Care Program for younger people and supports for people aged under 65 years who are not eligible for the NDIS and who have health-related needs. 
across other areas of government as well, disability inclusion, thanks to the advocacy of the sector moreover, but also because it is so fundamental to people's human rights that they can access government services wherever they need them. We continue to make inclusion business as usual. Another example is transport. The level crossing removal project has also aimed to incorporate improved accessibility across so many new stations and uh, tra train transport options, leaving a positive legacy for people with disability. We've also implemented legislative reforms to strengthen the rights, the protections and the safeguards for people with disability. Just this year, the Disability and Social Services Regulation Amendment Act 2023 became law in May. With, with this act strengthens safeguards and provides better protection for residential rights and more efficient disability worker screening. With each initiative, and these are just some, we make disability inclusion more like business as usual and less like a lifeboat in the ocean. Inclusive Victoria outlines our continued commitment to a more inclusive Victoria. And importantly, it looks at the road ahead. Inclusive Victoria lays out an, an, an ambitious reform agenda to get us closer to our vision, a genuinely inclusive, a genuinely fairer Victoria for the 1.1 million people with disability. The Victorian government has continued to make investments across key mainstream services, ensuring that people with disability can access the high quality and appropriate services that all Victorians should expect. Before I conclude, I'd like to thank you, the disability advocacy community. The work that you do continues to make a positive difference to the lives of Victorians with disability, to their families, their friends, their carers. I look forward to continuing to work together to ensure that supporting people with disability continues to become more like business as usual and less like that lifeboat in the ocean. I wish you well for the remainder of your conference. I look forward very much to hearing from you and the outcomes of um, this conference and all that we need to do together to focus our efforts. There is always more to do, and I look forward to working in partnership with you to do it. Thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you, Minister, for those words and for those uh, reflections, which I'm sure we'll speak about more at, as a group uh, in this afternoon's conference sessions. And thank you. I know it's been uh, a very busy day. It's a very busy day for you and you've taken time out to be here with us. So we really appreciate you coming along. Uh, the disability advocacy sector is very much looking forward to working with you and the Andrews government to drive a strong human rights agenda and make inclusion real and, as you said, um, make inclusion business as usual for all Victorians. Um, please join with me now in thanking Minister Blanford. <laughs>